Hey everybody, welcome back to the Green Room with Terry Green. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so excited uh, to have the studio guest this afternoon that will be stopping by. But before I get into my special guest, I want to take a few minutes because the purpose of the the podcast was to give you a little bit of backdrop on how crazy my life has been. And I wanted to make sure I integrated that into the podcast so people don't go have to call me and say they really don't understand why I do what I do. So the first thing I want to show you, I brought some show and tell. This record right here, if you can just see that, it's a record called Elaine Terry. That was my first artist name. I kept changing them. Made everybody mad. Elaine Terry, you got me turning around. And this record was produced and written by myself and Amir Saraf. If that name doesn't ring a bell, think about hits like Be My Lover and also Sweet Dreams. Sweet Dreams of Rhythm and Passion. That was LaBouche. So one month after I recorded and released this, I was six months pregnant with my son. They met Melanie, and Melanie went on to sell nearly 5 million records with La Bouche, and they were looking for me the entire time, which is a part of the story, because they were so successful in America, they wanted me to come back. I was actually teaching and had left the music business and um, bought the La Bouche album on accident and saw that my original producer, uh, Amir, was a part of and created and was the producer of La Bouche. So for me, this is an iconic record that will always be a part of my career. It's how I got started. The very, very first vinyl ever created from me, you got me turning around. So that's today's juicy little tidbit, and uh, I want to show you guys a few of those things as we go along. But let's get to our special guest. Ladies and gentlemen, millions of records sold, San Francisco-based, my very, very best friend. And today I'm honored, 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 honored to have Dinell Rhodes of the Weather Girls here in studio. Y'all give me a little clap, 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 clap. Thank you. Welcome, Thank girl. You. What's Thank up? You, Did you even know any of that? No, I didn't. had no idea. How are you, Dee? I'm doing fine. You look I'm beautiful. Fine. Thank you. You Thank know, you. women of a certain age, we have to keep it going, keep it hot and sexy. And I just think too often we don't do that. Yeah. But them Weather Girls do. Um, we just got the little weather girls in the studio today. Dinell, actually, um, before we get too deep, introduce yourself. Well, I'm, I'm Danielle Rhodes of the weather girls. And, uh, I mean, oh God, I'm just, I get, I get nervous, you know, when I'm into Well, I love you being nervous. I mean, you just did a show last year in Holland, Netherlands. How many people were at the, this toppy top or whatever it was called? Oh, it was called toppers. How many people were in that? And it was 90, the first day was 96,000 people. People. And then the second day was 98,000. So tell me why you embarrassed and scared to be on my podcast. I, I don't know why. I'm just, it's I just, just get nervous. Close. I get nervous. You know? I know. I get nervous and cut people off, which is what I'm not doing <laughs> in this episode. <laughs> so keep yeah. going with your introduction. Tell us, tell them, you know, your little bit about your okay. genealogy oh, biography. Well, um, I was born Danielle Rhodes and, uh, I'm the daughter of the original weather girl, Isora Rhodes Armstead. And um, I was born in San Francisco. Uh, And, uh, yeah, I've gotten to the business by way of my mother. And when she went on a, uh, Martha won a solo career. Martha Wash. Martha Wash, sorry. Right. Yeah, and she won a solo career, so I joined in with my mother in 1990. 1990. So you've been a weather girl for... Uh, woo, from 1990 until now. So what, how many years is that? Are we too old to calculate? Well, I'm, I'm <laughs> well it's at least so. 30 years. Yeah. 30 years as a weather girl. So when I'm on the road trying to sneak and sing my version of Rainy Men, <laughs> people will come up to me and be like, well, isn't the weather girls Martha Wash? But let's put that on my podcast today. Mm-hmm. Martha Wash left the weather girls in? 1991. She is the iconic yes. uh, uh, duo with your mom, but sure, yes. she left the band, and you became the band with your mother, yes. which was not the easiest thing on the oh, planet. God, no. So, um, there are six of you. No, there is seven. No, 11 of us. There are 11? 11, 11, 11 children. 
that uh, seven uh, originals and four uh, stepchildren. I didn't even know all this information. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. I saw I had time for all them babies. All, all of us, honey. All so of us. So, so our babies. Back to your story. I want yeah. to let you give you a chance to clear clarify. So your mother, the be- go from when you began the band and how okay. that went. Um, the beginning, um, it was 1990. Uh, my mother and Martha was going through a little change, and uh, Martha wanted a solo career. So um, she left the band, and my mother wasn't ready to stop singing. Right. And uh, then there was the idea of my f- uh, stepfather and uh, her uh, that uh, who could she get to um, oh, was replace thing. Martha? You right. Know? She was looking all over. She a little, she had Robin S., uh, mm-hmm. She um, had someone else, um, and then uh, it clicked. My father says, uh, wow, we're looking all over the place, and we got somebody right here in our backyard. And she said, who? She said, your daughter. (laughs) So then I just had my son in 91 and uh, working for this Oakland school district. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, got a call, and... She said, baby, I want you to come and sing with mama. Wow. And I was like, ah, you, you playing. I don't, I don't even want to hear that. She said, no, I'm not kidding. I want you to come and sing with me. And uh, that day, I didn't look back. I dropped everything and went to New York and we did a demo and uh, for a, a record company uh, here in Germany, um, East West Records, and uh, I never looked back. So let's go over to East West. I met you in Hamburg the first time. Um, first, I met you loosely somewhere else. But the real first time I met you, I was in uh, Boogie Park in Hamburg, one of the biggest studios in Germany. And they had all this soul food set up. I was like, yo, let me get my... They were like, get your fingers back. I'm like, why are there soul food? I don't get soul food right. in Germany. They had real, they had chicken, they had fried macaroni chicken, and cheese. macaroni and cheese. Greens. So we were so hungry. We had no yeah. money back then. We were struggling. I said, who coming for this? And I was like, maybe I can get some. No. And they said, the girls are coming. The girls don't mean nothing to me. Okay, whatever. So then about an hour later, around whatever the schedule time, Two very not so tall people came in with a lot of fur coats and lashes and and nails and all that. I said, "Well, who is this?" Oh, these are weather girls. And I said, "Well, Herbert, why didn't you tell me? They're amazing." Dee had not even take off her jacket, and she was already like picking into the food and taking stuff. <laughs> and I was like, "I love them. They so down to earth." Um, I was in awe because I was a fan of your mother since I'm a kid. So seeing you walk in, I didn't hundred percent know that you weren't Mar- I hadn't figured out all that out but I saw y'all and then your mom was so down to earth we just I think that night we went to the Radisson and actually had dinner together I'll never forget and Azora was just a beautiful spirit so that you carry that on with her music business ain't easy no and what's the biggest misunderstanding from your point of view as the daughter being on the inside not nobody has your bird's eye view in the planet. People talk about the Weather Girls, but only you could write that book about what it was like after how it lasted another 30 years. Well, it what was, was difficult? Well, uh, the difficult thing that, of course, I wasn't Martha. Okay. Ooh. Well, I, I never thought about that yeah, girl. I wasn't Martha. <laughs> but then after I opened my mouth, I did uh, um, a, uh, my debut. Ooh, okay. Was in uh, the, um, what you call the... The, the the place in New York, Sweetwaters. Sweetwaters, okay. Yeah, and my uh, debut was in Sweetwaters, and when I opened my mouth, honey, everybody's like, "Child, oh, you don't need Martha. That child can sing." Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, it just went on from there. Um, it, it it was hard, and then of course uh, at the time, I mean, back uh, in like the nineties, that's when the the music was changing a from disco, bit, from disco and stuff, and uh, they were taking all these teeny bopper groups and stuff was taking over. Uh, P Daddy, P Daddy was coming in and everything, and um, it was just changing, right? It was it was changing. So then, my mother and uh, my stepfather, we went came over to Germany right. and got a, a record contract with East West Records. And we never looked back. 
You, you shouldn't have. You, you kept it going. Yeah. There was a really, and I hope we can say it on camera because I want this to be a juicy podcast, mm-hmm. but I also want artists to understand what we as independent artists go through. Because, you know, I don't need to be, you know, we there's so much we don't talk about. Right. But what, what broke me down about you and your mom is when she went to the Library of Congress mm-hmm. and she registered the name mm-hmm. and you inherited it upon her death. You told me that mom was actually pretty much living in her car at one point. Yeah. Talk about this moment for you as a kid seeing this. You were with her. No, well, I mean, I came back home to uh, California. And, um, yeah, my mother was in New York. And she was going through a hard time. Hard time. I mean, she didn't want to tell anybody. That's okay. She always, you As know, she always did. She was very secretive. She kept a lot of things to herself. Um, so how did you find this stuff out? Because I I came to New York and uh, uh, being stubborn, you know. She told you not to come. Yeah. So I mean, I just I wanted I wanted to come I wanted to come to my mama, you know. I'm like any little girl that wants to be with her mama. I want to come. So I came and um, yeah, I saw her living in the Westbury Hotel. I know the Westbury. Yeah, Westbury Hotel, and uh, yeah, this this that was just a rough time. Yeah, but and she was still optimistic. Yeah. Like it's crazy how even when people were, she was going through stuff with other people yeah. and management. You said to me before that she still stayed optimistic. Yes, yeah, she's she was an optimistic person. She whatever happened to say, oh baby, don't worry, the Lord gonna take care of you, and it did, and and He did. Yeah. Now, did. when you first. You were 15 or younger. I can't remember the age. Talk about Studio 54, seeing Andy War. Like, wow. who you saw at Studio 54? Wow, 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 wow. Oh, uh. Oh. And why were you there was, illegally? That's what I need to know. I was young, but I was always bigger than... But you had some big breasts. Right. Is, <laughs> <laughs> some no, big breasts. Is, yeah, I know. And, I didn't and, have uh, none. I don't know what happened to me. And oh, I was Lord. big for my size, and uh, I just... I was kind of sort of learning the business, mm. you know, my... my Mom and my stepfather was teaching me the ropes and going around to every club. I mean, we went to uh, Zanzibar. We went to Bonds. We went to uh, Red Parrot. We Red went Parrot. to uh, Studio 54. But so Garage, Studio 54, you though. Know, all of them clubs. Well, who was in them. there? It was, it was so many Did you people. see Michael Jackson? No, I didn't. Okay. I didn't see Michael Jackson. I remember you saw some folks, but your mom knew Donna Summer. They all, yes, everybody. I, mean, I remember seeing, um, I forgot her name, uh, L- Lolita Holloway. Okay, yeah. I remember she, seeing Lolita Holloway yeah. and, um, ooh, a lot of them back then, you know, I was I'm not young because sh- I, didn't, I didn't know him by name, but I knew, I knew him by face, you know. And, um, yeah, I just, Studio 54 was just amazing to me. Wow. I saw so watch her go across this huge stage. Your mother. And, yeah, my mother. And this motorized uh, stage that went across from one end well, I wish to I could the see other. That. And, of course, you know, they say what goes on in Studio 54 stays in Studio 54. Was it like that? Oh, yes, it was like that. That must be like these private, every private party <laughs> events. <Okay. laughs> you saw everything. Everything. Okay. So, but, I mean, it was no, it was no face to me because... My mom, she never uh, hid anything from us as children. Mm-hmm. Um, she said, this is the world. She said, wow. you either be in it or a part of it or you be nothing at all. So she gave us that choice. You talked about the industry changing yeah. and just going in right there. What do you, you and I both listen to artists of today. Right. We listen to Afro pop. We like a lot of di- oh, diverse right. music. Right. Um what is good music for you? Oh, I mean, you, good music for me is a song with words. Uh, good melody. Uh, I mean, I, anybody loves a good beat. But okay. the song has to have substance. Right. It has to mean something. It has to tell a story. So why do you think artists today are lasting, have a sh- shorter shelf life? Because it ain't nothing but a beat. It's for a second. <laughs> it's like What's no your... meaning. No meaning to, I mean, the lyrics are, to me, crazy. Is the, that because we're old? No. Durr? 
No, not older. I just feel <laughs> we we just, you know, we into... Because you don't want to be that person. Like, right. we don't want to be, oh, I'm 50-something, so everything is bad. No. And I, but I do believe, and I hear it from my son, that... You know whether whether you know we 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 had a lot of issues with R. Kelly, whatever, whatever. But we can't deny, dude hey. could compose a record like, boy, yo, that was my, mm, mm, boy. oh my, <laughs> can I get a two? two? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a writer is a writer. I, right. I just saw a video of R. Kelly. Right. Um, you know, while he's incarcerated, yeah. I think he's controlling the whole prison right. with music because yeah, he told good. man, "Shut up, in word." I'm trying to sing this song right. for the press, Look, you hear me but singing? it's <laughs> but, the, right. but his voice sounds the right. same, and I just think, um, and that's another topic. I won't go there, mm-hmm. but I think that if you have the talent, it just lasts mm-hmm. forever. I mean, if you got it, you El Devarge. I mean, not only speaking of El Devarge and, and uh, R. Kelly, look at you, baby. You, you putting are, it back on me? <laughs> you are a writer. I'm sorry. I'm. It's only she, my. She's trying opinion. to throw this interview back on it's me, only y'all. My this is crazy. So, I love you. I love your writing. I don't know if in the industry. That's why I did the podcast. Yeah. Um, I wasn't going to do it because I didn't want to do something just with my technical level of it. But I wanted to before I pass away, before I leave this planet, I wanted to be able to say, here's a biography of what we really did. Um, people don't know that I wrote country music 20 years ago, right. um, that we wrote, ly- I, I was a lyricist, mm-hmm. more powerful lyricist than I was singing. You know, uh, for me, I, I like to be just in the zone. You know, you sat with me a lot of right, times, and it's just not about me, but I wanted, you tell a story because, we, you know, we're very sensitive mm-hmm. people. Um, people I can be super know. annoying right. with my emotions. Some mm-hmm. people told me that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But, you know, I'm good. One thing we do, we accept criticism, critique as we age in this business. Why do you think you survived so long? Huh? Why do I think I survived so long? It's just being from the old school. Being from the old yep, school. Yep, you rehearsed and all that. I, I, I love a good rehearsal. You're so good. I mean, that. if you don't have rehearsal... You just ain't right. You get angry up in the rehearsal. I do. I get mad. Now, I'm how many kidding. drummers have you fired? <laughs> John Lampkin, you might be fired on the next kick. <laughs> Ali, um, I, I think I've fired about one, two, two. <laughs> it was four drummers. Girl, you so, and so you fired, but... Now, you have on your latest record, Jay Williams playing on Super Love. Jay Williams plays for Dave Cos. He plays for Marcus Miller. All, I mean, he plays for everybody, Chaka Khan. Right. What was it like to hear his drum you know, session when you got it back for Baby. Super Love? <laughs> in the pocket. In the pocket. He was in the clutch. <laughs> <laughs> I would call it. He just... Mm. Gave it to you, and you felt it. Why do we love drummers so much? Because you know that some of you got to give the drummer some. Yeah. You got to give that drummer some. I don't think you need to drum it too much, but, but you can give the drummer some. <laughs> you got to give the drummer some. But, I mean, hey, if you, if you got it, you got it. Yes. Let's say with anything. Yeah. Um, I was with a friend. Um, he's connected to Swedish House Mafia. Mm-hmm. But he had something to say about R&B. He said when he talks to A&Rs or head of labels, they asked him, well, how do you know it's a hit? He said... Because the drums are in the pocket and I catch the hook. Yeah. So if the drums are in the pocket and you can't feel it, mm-hmm. you feel in a little bit, but you don't right. feel what we feel or I feel, then you don't really get it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So what's next, D? Well, what's next is uh, my new single. How it go? Hey, super love. I like the way you hit me with that super love. Oh, God, I love the song. I like Written it. Written by Terry, me, and um, Herman. Herman H. Baird. Yeah, Herman yeah. H. Baird. And, uh, I mean, wow. I was really amazed. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I first heard it, you know, uh, when I got put everything together, it was like, yeah, and I Wonderful. think it's a different record. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's very Minneapolis-ish. Yes. Um, wasn't meant to be. It just kind of came out like right. that. But I think that you really slayed the record. 
And you think some way I got to you giving no, it all really that. Giving me, I feel you giving me a little bit much, but you know, I'm just I'm just nervous. I'm a nervous that means you're still fresh. I'm, I'm I'm a nervous, you know, everything. So I'm like I'm a baby when it comes to, to, to stuff like this. So the so the legacy of the Weather Girls, all of her children, all of you. There are six children. You're the only girl. Yes. All from the immediate heard the children right. she get uh, that she gave birth to. Yeah. All of you still for decades will always earn. From your mother's Great. legacy, um, people don't realize that having hit records, having a legacy, you do pass it on to your children. Yeah. Um, I know how lucky you feel to be able to perform. Um, where are you performing next, and where where can people see you? Oh wow, I'm performing. Uh, what well, I have a lot of um, private gigs, and well, what um, kind of private? I thought those were illegal. No. Oh, those are gigs. Uh, those like, well, you know, sort of corporate. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I thought it was one of them other parties. No, no, no Down no, in no, L.A., no, Hollywood. No, no, no. I don't do L.A. parties. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I've been over here in Europe, and I've been just fine. Booked out. Booked out. Uh, always gigging almost like every other weekend or every weekend. And I, I just love it. D, what is your most annoying What's the most annoying trait you find today in other in an artist? What do they do that you think too many do but should do better? What could they do better? I'm sorry. This is only me. I love it when you do that. This is only me. <laughs> That's my good. opinion. Running. Oh, okay. Deep. Dig deeper. Dig. I mean, like... Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Now, if you Coco, we good. Well, okay. That's Coco a, and her son. No, I love, I love it. Well, but I it's love like it. Every single not every, but she artist. don't do that. No, I get so weak in the knees. They yeah. not saying right. weak and ye. Right. She doing it in a good like right. it's about tastefully doing it. Right, Take, right. I mean. But if Ooh. somebody just starts running, running like I love Coco over. Jones, yeah. but she do it tastefully. Yes. A lot of the words are straight, and then she does it when she needs. Shout out to Jermaine Dupri, right. great project, right. like Jim Ryan, Michael Cox. Well, yeah, but um, I, mean, I just love, I just love, I love a good bucket singer. Gut bucket, gut bucket. Explain what gut bucket means. Is I mean, that a slavery term? Laying, no, not not to say <laughs> slavery, but just laying back and singing a song, and when you when you feel the way they sing in that song, and you know that girl singing that song. You feel it. So, D, here's my question. We're going to yes. take a detour. Okay. What makes a man sexy over 50? Oh. For me, it's the dress. How they dress? How they dress. Okay. Yeah. And, um... Now, do zoot suits turn you on? Not <laughs> really. Okay. Big hats and... I mean, a nice little hat, little yeah. brim, you yeah, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. but, you know, <laughs> brother in the court. <laughs> what do you, you're single. Yeah. You, you had some relationships. Yeah. You, you go through stuff. Yeah. What's the number one thing you look for in a man today versus when you were 20? Personality. Okay. Uh, oh, right. Humor. Oh, girl, you're about to he bust you out right be. now. The personality. Has to be. He has to. I mean, he has to enjoy life. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Want to have fun. so a man with a good personality yeah. who can't really throw down on the other way. Oh well, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's all in the package. Now, you know? how you know? You went no. by personality. Well, yeah. So you I won't mean, take a bad personality with as good in bed. No, 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 no. I'm just saying. It's all, it's all good, brother. No problem. She but, said, you know, "I gotta let it go." Gotta let it go. Yeah. But, uh, now, what if someone's super sweet? Um, but they just, they're not really hitting the mark. No, I'm sorry. You got to go. You got to go. You know, like, I, can, I can be super sweet myself. So. <laughs> no, you, you got to go. It all, it all has to round off in the package. Are you romantic? I guess I'm romantic. Yeah. I call myself romantic. You like candles and blah? Yes. Okay, and well, yeah. Like dinner, Ooh, okay. Stuff, you know, like that. You, I hate that you California know. thing you do, right? <laughs> this little, uh, you you know, wanna... I mean, nice walks in the vineyards and you what know. Kind of this... I love it, girl. You I just love we it. just two generations from work in the vineyard. You talk about walks in, no, oh, celebrate. I love it. I lo- have you ever went into a vineyard and walked? I did. Walked I sung in vineyards. Yeah. And look, it's boring. so beautiful. Mm. I walked. 
All right, but you know, you're way more California dreaming to me. But okay. uh, so, who's the most interesting celebrity you've ever met along your tour life where you were excited to meet them? Like, for me, it's Donna Summer. I literally broke into tears when she came out like, Terry, you don't have to cry. Yes, I do. Ah! You know, wow. I was I was bursting into tears. Me and Donna Summer were just like hugging. And she's like, I already know about you, Terry. We're good. When you go write these songs? Right. And unfortunately, she passed away. Um, wow. She was my big highlight. Well, my highlight was uh, when I met Luther. Unfortunately, he passed also. What's your favorite Luther song? Um, Creep. I know you all shade the character <laughs> like some creep. Creep, creep. Creep, creep, creep. Our creep, podcast creep, creep, promoter creep. claims Mr. Basement 3034, Basement, whatever. I always get it wrong, but I'm old and I just put it on age. Uh-huh. He says, I grew up on in Ghana on R&B. I'm like, mm-hmm. But they do. They really, yeah. really have a huge R&B scene. I just think always about the states and forget how wide soul music is as a genre. So, okay. PY, shout out. Um, I believe you now. But okay. girl, so, Luther Vandross. Yes. And who else? And uh, I want to say Gladys Knight. Oh, don't be trying to do my girl. No, I've been but trying I to meet Gladys for yeah. a minute. Um, yeah. Actually, my friend Phil from NYCC, from another band, he's friends with H.B. Barnum, who know he's really best friends with her. I'm not, I have tried my best to get to see her. I just love Gladys. And she has this thing in her voice like me where we both go, uh, that, whatever that is. So, you know, I'm going to get my little. Yeah, but I mean. Landlord. Yeah. She may not remember me, but honey, I shall sure remember You her. met Gladys? I, I, didn't, I didn't meet her, but I was in the same oh, wow. you know, uh, room with her. Did you meet? Um, and, and no, the pips, I, I just stood there and I looked. Wow. I just stood there. Who was your mother's favorite talent uh, artist? Wow. Or was it a gospel artist that she uh, really... I can't remember my mom's favorite. My mom used to love so many. Okay. You know, she admired so many, so many singers. Mm-hmm. But, I, ne- you know, it's funny. I never asked her who was her favorite singer. Wow. I never asked her. But, uh, yeah, she had a lot. Okay. Yeah. So, with your, your mother, you have a son... What is the future of the Weather Girls with your son in, involved? Well, I don't, well, I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. If something comes out of it, um, I have a granddaughter. Oh, you do? Yeah. and oh, Mini gosh, Weather Girl. A mini Weather Girl. She's a mess. <laughs> but uh, she also sings. I uh, know. I've seen her in action. When she, wants, when she stands and demands attention, believe me. So me, you and I, we have a unique position of having played and performed going to get a little political here. Okay. We played and performed in places like Beirut. Mm-hmm. We played in Russia. Mm-hmm. We played in Ukraine. We played all over the world. Right. When we can tell people that the people are all good, when you are with people, people are influenced by different things, uh-huh. of course, religion, politics, et cetera, et cetera. But the basic part of people is really good. Mm-hmm. You always felt welcome. I remember standing on the stage in Beirut, running across the bar, because you had to stand on the bar to sing, right. me and Tara McDonald, um, and it was like heaven. Right. And, you know, to see the world where it is in this moment with war and just all crazy stuff, it just makes no sense. In the end of the day, war doesn't solve any problems, so I don't know why we keep going back to that as a reason to solve issues, because yeah. you just people just get hurt. On all, on all sides. Um, so, to uplift ourselves a little bit, let's get back to you, Miss Dee Dee. Mm-hmm. So, I have a question. What's the most challenging thing as a vocalist, as a singer, that you've had to overcome in the industry? Learn, I want to say, learning to make a song my own. Elaborate. Uh, delivering, to deliver a song. Um, you have to make it sound real with a lot of emotions and, you know. Was it tough for you to jump into the Weather Girls and take the place of Martha Wash? Because oh. basically that's what you God. did. I mean, Martha's some big shoes. Y- yes. And I know how much you actually <laughs> really mentioned to me several times. You looked up to her as a vocalist yes. and how she just 
slaves. Yes, honey. She is the queen of the, I say the high vocalist. <laughs> <laughs> the queen. I mean, she had a, she has a beautiful, beautiful voice. And I just love it. Sometimes I wish I could sing like that. but Girl, don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> I had an opportunity to write for her in New York with Bob Sinclair. We wrote mm -hmm. a song, um, and eventually she did sing it. I think I played it to you. Yeah. She's, she's just great. Yeah, just And as we've stood the, the test of time. Um, Dee, I want to say to you first, thank you. Not only for being my friend, a true friend in the industry, where celebrity and... All the other nonsense doesn't matter. You've been my ride or die Thanks. through so much. My, my, you know, my road dog. <laughs> <laughs> and we do so many fun things together that outside of music. But if there was one thing you wanted to say to people about your mother and her legacy, what would that be as we close out? Wow. Oh, I just, I have too many things to say. <laughs> but I could say, even though I'm not her, I try every day to deliver a song like my mom. You know you sound like her now. You really? I mean, so it doesn't seem like More it. now than like 20 years ago. Wow. Um, you were like Shirley Temple when she was alive. <laughs> I would go see the Weather Girls, and they kicked me out the group. True story. I went down to some gig. Mama, we were doing a TV show. Mom had a gig, Izora. And she said, just get Terry to jump in. <laughs> I was like, cool, a check, I'm good, weather girls. I got to that day on gig, and people said, you ain't mama. I was like, I'm out, bye, <laughs> never coming back. It took me like 20 years before I did another gig with you, because the weather girls, I think I'm good. I think I'm loud. No, you I good. think I'm you powerful. Good. In my zone, yeah. but I ain't in your zone. <laughs> I know when I look like time to leave this. you know you know that man to come get the thing and take yeah, you off you at the, the apollo <laughs> i'm that person the, <laughs> the sand man sand came man. in no i mean yeah. you got you just you know i'm not a gospel singer people mm -hmm. think i am just because i'm black i'm kind of bucks to me whatever mm -hmm. but i'm not i know people who can really you are someone y'all got the chops so i got it from her we all do different things yeah and we all have a place in the industry D, I want to thank you for being here at the podcast, at the Green Room, getting green with us today. Um, I hope you and all the endeavors you have coming up. Brand new record, Super Love. Yes, Super Love, love. remixed love. also by Frank yes. Blythe yes. um, in the UK. Um, I'm hoping everybody, please check out our new record. Please. Super Love. Please. And to all the queens, we'll be coming with pride real soon. Hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we, you know, we didn't get to talk a lot about all the communities that support us, but we, you and I, we support everyone. Mm -hmm. Your cause is our cause. Yes. And if we can tell the story through music, we do. We have a special project coming up mm -hmm. right now with the Delusions yes. song. Um, so catch us next time. D, I hope you come back. Okay. It's been a pleasure. Could you give us a little tidbit of Rain and Men? Just it's a Rain and Men. Uh. Hallelujah. It's raining, man. Amen. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to the Green Room. We're going to be acting up again next month. I'm going to keep it coming with more hot artists. D, I love you. Thank you for thank doing you what you man. do. Keep making that paper. Keep singing Raining Men all night long, however long got to <laughs> sing it. And we love you. Much applause. Check them out on, on our website, on Spotify, The Weather Girls, Dino Rose. And we're, this is Terry Green from The Green Room saying bye-bye. <laughs>